This is section 2.4 on multiplying and dividing integers. In order to think about multiplying and dividing integers, we're going to start out looking at some patterns. So if we look at this pattern of products, we have 3 times 5 is 15, 2 times 5 is 10, 1 times 5 is 5, and 0 times 5 is 0. So look at the pattern of the results that we get. First of all, our first factor is decreasing by 1 each time. And then if we look at our results, our product decreases by 5 each time. Let's look at what happens if we continue the pattern. So if we continue decreasing our factor by 1 each time, if we take 0 and decrease it by 1, we get negative 1, then we have negative 2 and negative 3. And also look at what happens to our product. It continues to decrease by 5. So what this pattern suggests is that if we find the product of a negative number and a positive number, we get a negative number. That's what happened in these three cases down here. And we assume that because it should continue the same pattern that we had up here. Our next question is, what would happen if we had two negative numbers and we were finding their product? So again, we're going to look at a pattern. If we assume what we found out in the last slide, if we have a positive number and a negative number, that we get a negative number. Then we'd have 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, 1 times negative 5 is negative 5, and 0 times negative 5 is 0. So again, we have our pattern here that our factors are going down by 1, and our pattern here that, in this case, our product is increasing by 5 each time. Now, if we continue the pattern, so if our first factor continues to go down by 1, then we end up with negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. So in each one of these, we end up taking a negative number times a negative number. And our pattern, if these increase by 5 each time, is that we end up with positive 5, positive 10, and positive 15. So what this tells us is that if we're multiplying two negative numbers, we end up with a positive number. So in general, if we're multiplying two numbers that have the same sign, we get a positive number. Because we already know if we multiply two positive numbers, we get a positive number. And we just found out that if we multiply two negative numbers together, we get a positive number. The other piece of this is that if we're multiplying two numbers that have different signs, we end up with a negative number. So either way, if we have 2 times a negative 4, we're going to end up with negative 8. And if we have negative 2 times positive 4, we end up with a negative 8. So here's another way to think about this. A plus times a plus is a plus. A minus times a minus is a plus. Notice that both of the, in both of these, we have the same sign. Now if we have different signs, we have minus times plus, that gives us minus, or if we have plus times a minus, that gives us a minus. Let's do some examples. In all of these, we're just doing the multiplication and then figuring out what the correct sign is for the answer. In this one, if we think about taking 7 times 6, that would give us 42. And now we want to figure out what sign our answer has, since we have a plus and a minus it means we have different signs. So that's this situation up here. A plus times a minus equals a minus. So it means our answer is going to be a minus 42. We have the same situation here. We have a minus 4 and a positive 10. If we just had 4 times 10, that would be 40. Since our signs are different, then we end up with a negative 40. Okay, in these two down here, we have numbers with the same sign. So here we have negative 10 times negative 19. Since they have the same sign, we know our answer is going to be positive. So really all we have to do is think about the product of 10 and 19, which would be 190. And we have the same thing over here. If we have negative 4 times a negative 3, we know, since these two have the same sign, that our answer is going to be positive. And 4 times 3 is 12, 
so we end up with a positive 12. Now here's a hint if we're multiplying more than two numbers together. We already saw if we have two negatives multiplied together, we end up with a positive. If we have three negatives multiplied together, we actually end up with a negative number. If we have four, we end up with a positive number, and if we have five, we end up with a negative number. So the easiest way to think about these is just count how many negative numbers there are. If there are an odd number of negative numbers, so here where there are three and here where there are five, then we end up with a negative. If there are an even number of negatives, so here where there are two and here where there are four, that means that we're going to end up with a positive number. So here are some examples. So let's think about as our first step in these, figuring out what the sign of our answer is going to be. So in this one we have a plus and a plus and a negative. Since we only have one negative number in there, that means our answer is going to be negative. Now we can just multiply the 6 and the 20 and the 15 together, and we already have our sign figured out. 6 times 20 is 120. And then if we take 120 times 15, that's going to give us 1800 if we multiply that out. So our final answer is going to be negative 1800. Okay, in this next one, again, we're counting up how many negatives there are. We have a negative times a negative times a negative. That means we actually have three negatives. That's an odd number. So that means our answer is going to be negative. Now we can just think about 4 times 5 times 2. 4 times 5, that's going to be 20. 20 times 2 is going to give us 40. So that gives us a negative 40. Okay, in this one, we actually have 4 negatives. Since that's an even number, that means that our answer is positive. So we can write the positive in here just to remember that we already know what that's going to be. And actually once we do this, once we figure this out, we can just take all those negatives off of there. Because really all we're doing now is multiplying the numbers together. So that means we have 6 times 1 times 4. 6 times 1 is 6. So then we have 6 times 4, which gives us 24. Okay, these two at the bottom get a little bit into order of operation. Now our negative here just stays out to the side. Because remember, if we have an exponent like this, it only affects the number that comes right before it. So what this means is that we're taking the opposite that comes from over here, and then the 5 squared means 5 times 5. So our negative stays out here, and then we're just doing 5 times 5 to get 25. So our answer for this ends up being negative 25. Now for this one, what's squared in this one is the negative 5. So that means we have two factors of negative 5. Now since there are two negatives, that means our answer is positive. So that means we're going to have a plus, and then if we take 5 times 5, we get 25. So notice how this one ended up being plus 25. This one ended, ended up being minus 25. We're also going to look at division of integers, and it's related to multiplication, since multiplication and division are related in the first place. 
So if we have 6 divided by 2 equals 3, we know that's true because 3 times 2 equals 6. So we can go back and multiply those two together and get 6. We can do the same thing if we have negative numbers included in our problem. If we have negative 6 divided by 2, that would have to be negative 3 because negative 3 times 2 is going to give us negative 6. So to go back and check this, we'd be multiplying the negative 3 times the 2. And since that has one negative, that would give us the negative 6. Same way if we have 6 divided by negative 2, since negative 3 times negative 2 would give us positive 6, then that means the answer for this is negative 3. And here where we have a negative 6 divided by a negative 2, we get positive 3. Because if we multiply 3 and negative 2, we get a negative 6. Now a little bit easier way to think about it is, again, if we just look at the signs of our the numbers in our quotient. This works just like it does for multiplication. If we're dividing two numbers that have the same sign, we're going to get a positive number. So either 12 divided by 4 or negative 12 divided by negative 4 is going to give us 3. If the two numbers in our quotient have different signs, then our answer is a negative number. So if we have either negative 12 divided by positive 4 or positive 12 divided by negative 4, in each case we get negative 3. So here again is just a different way to look at this. If we have a plus divided by a plus, we get a plus, or a minus divided by a minus, we get a plus, because in both of those, our signs are the same. But if we have different signs, so either a minus divided by a plus or a plus divided by a minus, in both of those two cases, we end up with a minus. So let's do some examples. And again, we're going to do the division with the positive values of our integers and then we'll figure out in the beginning what our sign will be. So in this case, we have a positive 21 and a negative 7. That means our signs are different. Which means that our quotient is going to be negative. So we can write the negative out in front just to start with, and then if we think about 21 divided by 7. So let's even write this out this way. This is going to be the same as negative 21 divided by 7. 21 divided by 7 is 3, so we end up with a negative 3. Okay, let's look at this one next. In this one, our signs are the same. which means our answer is positive. So again, we can go ahead and write the positive symbol there just to remind ourselves. And then we can actually do the division just with the positive values of each of these two numbers. 48 divided by 6 is going to give us 8. Okay, now this one is kind of a trick question. If you remember when we talked about dividing whole numbers, division by zero gives us something that's undefined. So anytime you see that you're dividing by zero, you can just say this is undefined. Finally, if we have negative 36 divided by 6, these are different signs, which means our answer is negative. So that means this is the same as negative 36 divided by 6. So in a way, we're moving the negative sign from where it is right with the 36 to sort of out in front of this whole problem. And then we can just do this part. 36 divided by 6 is 6. So our final answer is negative 6. Okay, let's evaluate some algebraic expressions. So in each of these, we're going to be doing both a multiplication problem and a division problem. First of all, if we have x equal to negative 8 and y equal to negative 2, then if we're looking at 
x, y, we're going to fill in our parentheses for the x was negative 8 and the y was negative 2. Now since we have two numbers with the same sign, since they're both negative, that means we know our answer is going to be positive and really what we're doing here is then just multiplying the 8 and the 2 and we get a positive 16. When we're doing the division, we're starting out the same way, so we're replacing our x with negative 8 and our y with negative 2. And notice that we have the same rule for division that we did for multiplication. Since we have two numbers with the same sign, that means our answer is going to be positive. We can write the positive sign in there just to remind ourselves. Then we can kind of forget about the signs here because we already have that figured out. So this is the same as positive 8 divided by 2, which just gives us 4. Okay, let's try this one. If we have x times y, that means we're replacing our x with 24 and our y with negative 8. Now this time we're multiplying two numbers with different signs, so that means our answer is negative. Then if we multiply 24 and 8, notice how we're leaving this negative sign out in front. Negative 24 times 8 is 192. So our answer ends up being negative 192. Now for the division, again this is going to work out the same way as far as the signs go. Because again for this one we have two numbers with different signs. So we know our answer is going to be negative. And then we can just think about what's 24 divided by 8. So we end up with an answer of negative 3. So notice how in this first one, both of our answers came out to be positive. In the second one, both of our answers came out to be negative. Okay, and finally, if we have x equal to negative 9 and y equal to negative 9, then we're replacing both of these values with negative 9. We have two numbers with the same sign. So that means our answer will be a positive. And then all we're doing now is taking 9 times 9, so we get a positive 81. If we divide these two, again, we should come out with the same sign for our answer that we did in the multiplication. So we have negative 9 divided by negative 9. Since those are the same sign, we know it's going to be a positive answer. And then if we take 9 divided by 9, we actually get 1. So if our answer for this one is a positive 1. Okay, we can also solve problems by multiplying or dividing integers. And in these first two, all we're really doing is translating from the words to the symbols. So remember, product is a word for multiplication. So if we're finding the product of negative 13 and negative 5, that means we're multiplying the negative 13 and the negative 5. We have the same sign, so that means we're getting a positive answer. We have a positive, and then we're taking 13 times 5, which is going to give us 65. So that's our product. Now in this one we're finding the quotient of 63 and negative 9. Quotient means division. So that means we're actually taking 63 and dividing it by negative 9. In this one we have two numbers with different signs, so that means we know our answer will be negative. So we have our negative out here, and then we have 63 divided by 9. 
And if we figure that out, 63 divided by 9 is 7, so we end up with negative 7. Finally, during a cold front in Canada, the temperature dropped 4 degrees Fahrenheit each hour for 7 hours. We're going to express the total drop in temperature as an integer. If the temperature dropped by 4 degrees, if we want to represent that situation with an integer, if we're dropping by 4 degrees, we would write that as a negative 4. And then we had each hour for 7 hours. So for each one of those hours, we drop by negative 4, which means we're multiplying negative 4 times 7. Now since these two have different signs, that means we know our answer will be negative. So this is the same as negative out here and then 4 times 7, which gives us negative 28. So our total drop in temperature was twenty eight degrees. Now in the problem they said to represent this as an integer, we would represent this by as negative twenty eight.